Oh god, I don't see my shoes! Yeah, I put my shoes down over there. I can't go in there without my shoes on. This is ridiculous. Oh. Hang on. Just put my shoes. I'll be with you in a minute. Don't talk to me and dance. Oh dear. Hang on. That's right. I'm just doing one lace up. Just doing the other lace. Hang on. Where's my shirt? I put my shirt there and it's clean. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Put the chair in, will you? Okay, thanks. That's great. Still look alright. Yeah, I yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome oh, that's your host, Keith Chegwin. Oh, hey! <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> oh, gosh. Turn that off. Hello to all M Fortune Bingo players. How are you all doing? And hello to uh, all the people on YouTube as well. Uh, nice to have your company too. Uh, and all my, my Twitter folk. Uh, look, I've got my phone ready uh, for people writing in for tweets and things. So um, this is a free for all for the next two hours. You can ask me questions, do anything you like. Um, and one of the first questions is, am I a bingo fan? Well, I'll let you into a secret. Uh, many, many years ago, a long time ago, uh, I ran a thing, uh, my own bingo company, uh, for about seven years, and it was one of the most successful uh, bingo companies around. It really was, like celebrity bingo companies. So, oh gosh, I love bingo, I really do. And in fact, uh, uh, you win on my bingo site, I used to deliver their money, yeah? And I said, even if you win 30p or three quid or what have you, I'll deliver it to wherever you like. Unfortunately, one guy lived in Germany. That was a hell of a trek for three quid, but uh, worth it. Uh, I've got questions coming up on the right-hand side, and I've got you right in the middle there. Uh, are you a bingo fan? I'm just, one, I'm just going to throw lots of questions at you now. Have you gotten any exciting work projects coming up? No. <laughs> no, I have. <laughs> I've got loads of bits and bobs. Hey, look, I'll tell you more about that in a minute, uh, but also let me uh, chat to our Twitter people as well because um, they're on board. If you've got a question to ask on Twitter, uh, tweet me now and I'll try and do it for you. Uh, Griff... Um, What's his, oh God, what's his name? Hang on just a minute. Um, oh, hang on. I don't know. Who's the, who is the most famous celebrity you know? Oh gosh, that's really difficult. I bumped into Michael Gove the other day, you know, the politician. Um, M Fortune Casino, adjust your audio level, it says. What's that mean? Am I too loud? Uh, I'm sure the guys will tell me. Um, yeah, I bumped into Michael Gove, and I was quite surprised because he went, hello, Keith, hello, how are you? <laughs> really nice bloke. Um, oh, I don't know, I've met loads of people. The most famous person that I, I suppose Daniel Craig was fantastic. I was um, hosting BAFTAs at the time, and I introduced uh, Daniel Craig on stage. And uh, whilst the uh, was playing all the nominees and things, he just quietly said to me, he said, uh, hey, Chagas, I said, what, Daniel? <laughs> he said, uh, he's still knocking on doors, which I thought was amazing that he knew me from GMTV going around knocking on people's doors, giving out things. Uh, oh, God, they were great days. I can't tell you. We knocked on a lady's door, gave her a cheque <laughs> for £10,000, and uh, live on TV, uh, she turned around and said... Um, <laughs> Hey, Chagas, I said, what? Should you won't tell him I've been done for shoplifting, will you? <laughs> and then there was another guy, and knocked on his door, gave him a check for £10,000. And he was so excited, he was jumping up and down like a kangaroo, bouncing around all over the place. And uh, all of a sudden, he stopped. <laughs> when he stopped, live on telly, he said, is this going out live? I went, yeah. He went, oh, God, Chagas. He said, I've lost my benefits. <laughs> He was claiming incapacity benefits. Okay, I'm ignoring the screen on the right-hand side. Uh, are you a bingo fan? Lots of people are asking about Naked Jungle. Did you enjoy it? And would you do it again? No. Yes, I'm sure it's a lot of blokes asking about Naked Jungle. Yeah, they're all there at 11 o'clock. Wife's gone to bed. Watch Cheggers Naked. I know. <laughs> um, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. I thought it would be a, a bit of a laugh. 
I thought no one would ever see it because it would go out at 11 o'clock at night, uh, you know, and you'd probably get, I don't know, 20,000 people watching. It still holds the record for the highest view figures on Channel 5. I think maybe the football beat it at one time. Uh, but I thought it would be a bit of a laugh, and oh my gosh, it was the biggest mistake I ever made because it didn't work for three years after it. Um, and I apologise uh, to my mum for it. And I've said to her, even though she's passed away, that I'll never do anything like that ever again. And I promise you, I won't. Um, uh, what was it like being on Dancing on Ice? Tough, really tough. Because, uh, well, what happened was, <clears throat> uh, they phoned me up and they said, we're doing Dancing on Ice, would you like to do it? Now, I've always wanted to do that show, but I've never had time because it takes quite, yeah, I think it's sort of like 12 weeks out of your life. I mean, <laughs> what celebrity's got that much free time? <laughs> quite a lot of us. Um, but anyway, they phoned me up and I've always been a fan of skating and I've always wanted to learn to skate. Um, and years ago, I had uh, a few lessons with a lady called Carol Collins who's Phil Collins's mother, and I went to school with Phil Collins. But anyway, she taught me a few things to skate around, so I was never very good. I got the bug for it, um, and I always vowed that I would one day learn to skate. Anyway, Dancy and I found on that, uh, yeah, likely to take part, uh, so I had to go to the, to this ice rink uh, in the east of them. Um, and it was quite funny, really, because you get there, and then, I don't know, they get you signing forms, take your measurements, and then they give you a brand new pair of boots that you've never worn in your life before. And then I met Jane Torbell and Christopher Dean, and uh, they give you these sort of challenges to do, like, you know, uh, can you lift your leg up here? Uh, how long can you stand without wobbling? Uh, but one of the major tests was to skate round the ice as fast as you can. Now, you, I've never worn these skates before in my life. I haven't skated for like 40 years. And they say what they're going to do is put a speed gun on you to see how fast you can go. So I said, well, um, you know, who's, what's the fastest speed record to date? And they said, well, Jane does 14 miles an hour. Anyway, they put the speed gun on me and caught me. I was doing 15 miles an hour down one side of the ice rink. And then I thought... Oh, God, I've got to turn left. And as I turned left, I slipped, fell over, and cracked my shoulder in three places, broke three ribs. I was in a hell of a state, it really was. So bang went my chances of uh, being on that year's uh, Dancing on Ice. But they invited me back the following year. But during the year, <clears throat> I had a bit of time to brush up. And when I arrived back uh, to do Dancing on Ice, uh, well, to say they weren't very happy, really, because I could skate. Uh, <laughs> I think they were sort of like looking for a comedy person that would fall into the set and things like that. Uh, but with the things I'd learned, uh, I didn't. Uh, but anyway, uh, came fourth on Dancing Ice, that'll do me. Uh, but the biggest achievement for me was getting a phone call from a group of uh, Russian uh, dance stars called the Imperial um, Ice Stars. And the Russians phoned me up, and this guy said, hey, Mr. Treguin. He said, I said, yes. He said, uh, we want you to skate with us. And I thought it was John Cole, sure, having a wind-up. So um, what I did, <laughs> I took the guy's number and called him back the following day. And it was genuinely the Imperial Ice Star skating champions from Russia. Uh, and they said, look, we're doing uh, the Nutcracker on Ice. Uh, we enjoyed your skating, we thought you were very good, and we'd like you to play the part of Drosselmeyer in the Nutcracker, kicking off at the London Palladium. I couldn't believe it. So there was I, uh, skating with, you know, 26 gold, silver, bronze medalists uh, in the nice shed. So that really made my day, is that some people uh, appreciated that I could skate, and it wasn't just a joke, and it wasn't a joke for me, and I really enjoyed myself. Mind you, when I got on the ice at the London Palladium, Russian guy with a cigarette that wasn't lit, uh, <laughs> scooped onto the ice in a pair of flimps. He said, uh, you? Uh, yes, he said, you skate for me. So I skated around a bit for him, showed him some of my best moves. And then he looked at me, he said, uh, you're skating? You crap. <laughs> he said, but do we make much better? And by the time I did it, it was fantastic. So there you go. Uh, uh, what other questions? Uh, our player, Cheeky Cherry, wants to know if you've if you wore a if you ever worn a mankini. <laughs> no, no, look at the size of me, look at the shape of me. Would you get me wearing a mankini? No bloody way. 
what's uh, what's that? And what's your favorite? Can you tell us your favorite joke? Uh, oh gosh, I've got loads. I put them up on Twitter each day. And basically, and I've always said this, they're jokes that I've heard and I've been told over the years. They're the jokes that I put on Twitter. Um, my favorite joke, watch yellow and looks good on your mother-in-law. A JCB. <laughs> I do like that one. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I, a German shepherd craps on my lawn each morning. Yeah, and the other day he brought his dog. Hey! <laughs> There's loads more if you want them, I promise you. Um, I've got an app out, an app that does jokes and things. But basically, I'm a, I, even at the top of the app, I always say that uh, these are jokes that I've heard or been told, even on my Twitter page as well. Uh, some I make up, <clears throat> very few, uh, but the rest uh, from like cabbies and bus drivers and people I've met in the pub and things like that. Um, oh my gosh, uh, Andrew McCann wants to know. If you're pro Brexit and you or you or if you want to stay in the EU, oh God, I didn't realise this would be uh, political. And um, I'm Brexit. There you go. I'm honest about it. And the only reason being is because yes, we can stay in and negotiate new terms, but I think it's always best to shut the door, then open it again and agree better terms. So let's come out and let's agree a better deal for our. United Kingdom. There you go. Does that make sense? I think it does. And um, I'll straw poll uh, with people I meet up and down the country. And um, <clears throat> a lot of people will leave, and I can appreciate their feelings for it. And um, it just seems that there's a lot of money going to Europe, and uh, it doesn't seem that much coming back. And um, so let's leave. Let's create a, a new contract. With them. It's not very long, is it, to do that thing? Uh, oh gosh, will I get loads of flack now? Oh, who cares? Um, oh gosh, uh, Andrew, oh, done, Andrew. Um, customer asking, do you play M Fortune Bingo? Which, of course, you do. <laughs> Oh, of course I do. Yeah. Do you know what? I love bingo. I really, really love bingo. Um, and I, I like. I like to sort of like get involved with it. When I sort of ran a bingo site, it was great because you take all the players out to the Lakeside Country Club and treat it like a, a like a chat room, like a friendly place. And this is why I like M Fortune because uh, what's the word? They're interacting with the public, and I think that's really important as a bingo site uh, to treat it like a bingo hall. You know what I mean? You invite your friends in, you have a bit of a chat, you give them some surprises, some some prizes, and it does work. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> Love it. Or praise, praise the Lord. For M Fortune uh, Casino. Um, what's the best interview you've ever done? Poor oh, God. Best interview I've ever done? Oh, Patrick Swayze. He was absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you a little secret about him. <clears throat> he came on a program I did many years ago called The Big Breakfast. Do any of you ever remember The Big Breakfast? Yeah, it was Chris Evans, who's gone on to best of things, really. Um, Gabby Roslin. Uh, oh, Paul Yates, a whole host of people. But Patrick Swayze came into the studio and had a cigarette on. And like, you know, we were, I mean, we didn't pay for gas. They just came on for nothing. And like, you know, you've got the biggest star in the world standing in the house with a fag on. And they shouted in my earpiece secretly. I mean, the, you know, I think he probably heard it. Tell him to put that bloody cigarette out. Uh, now, how did you tell Patrick Swayze to put a bag out? So I looked at him and said, uh, Patrick, we're on in about 10 seconds. He went, oh, God, and got, <laughs> got rid of the cigarettes. And I said, oh, sorry about that. He said, I said, we're not back with you for about another three minutes. He said, oh, don't worry, bud, that's fine. But uh, absolutely lovely man. Uh, what other interviews? Neil Sedaka, nice bloke. Played the piano with him, got very upset because I kept asking him about his stool position. Uh, <laughs> that was my little giggle. Uh, who else? Oh, gosh, there's loads of people. I, I, I've been so lucky. Oh, who's that guy? Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, big American star. You know, it's funny because the smaller stars would never participate in some gags and things.
things, but the bigger they are, the better. And Shirley Bassey was fantastic. She was a bit of a laugh. And oh, the other person I've interviewed, which I mean, I know <clears throat> some of you think a bit odd here, uh, was Margaret Thatcher. She was a really nice person, regardless of her politics and her views. As a person, she was really very nice. So, uh, mind you, she had really hairy legs. Because <laughs> I sat there on this program Saturday Superstore next to her, and I looked down, she had white, sort of like, like white tights on, and oh my gosh, the matting that was going on in there, uh, I kept thinking, you yeah, know, does she shave her legs when she goes abroad? <laughs> but uh, yeah, really hairy legs. And, uh, I, do you know, some of the questions uh, have gone through too quickly, and I'm not sure whether I can actually wind back on the right-hand side, I can. Um, hang on, what was it? What's your signature dish from Celebrity MasterChef? Oh, God, I've never been so bored in my life on that show. I, I tell you, honestly, it takes hours to do. People think Ma Celebrity MasterChef takes about 20 minutes. It doesn't. You get there at 6 o'clock in the morning, you hang around till 7. Somebody comes up to you about 8 and says, do you want a coffee? And then 9 o'clock, all the other celebrities arrive, and then people are bringing in pots and pans and cooking books and recipes from their mother and all this sort of thing, which they're told not to bring. Uh, and they're, and they're, I'll tell you what, the production team behind it have a, a hell of a job getting those cookery books off them. Um, there was one lady whose name shall remain nameless, insisted that she took her potato peeler onto the show <laughs> and they had to let her do it because we were all the celebrities of oh sorry it's only a bloody fed potato peeler but yeah um around about two o'clock in the afternoon you do a bit of cooking and then you leave your cooking there and they sort of eat it around about four o'clock and then you go in about five o'clock and they're judging oh, God, it takes so long um but yeah, long days, uh, but I, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> In fact, I was quite pleased to be off it. <laughs> and do you know what? I secretly got myself off the show, because what I did, I cooked mince uh, balls uh, with chilli and garlic, and I left them a bit raw, and I knew what would happen. They tucked into them and said, oh, this is raw, this is horrible. I was the next one off. So there you go. <clears throat> Enjoyed the show, liked being with it, takes too long to do. And um, I think my problem is that I do a lot of live TV. So once you've done live TV, um, you can go home. <laughs> so you, you sort of do your show between seven and nine. There's no retakes because it's gone. Um, and then you've got the rest of the day off. <laughs> so yeah, really lucky. Um, Andrew McCann wants to know, oh, I've done that one. Um, what do you think of Noel Edmonds? Moving on. Um, <laughs> He's all right. He's okay. Don't ever speak to him, really. It's a long time ago. People always bump into me and go, uh, how's Noel? Oh, I haven't got a bloody clue how Noel is. Uh, I know he's doing, what's that thing? Uh, Dole or no deal. No deal or no deal. Um, and yeah, I wish him lots of luck with it. But I, yeah, because I worked, I only worked with him for six years. I don't socialise with him. Uh, yeah, so uh, good luck to the bloke. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Uh, Ashley Stebbings, I've got him on Twitter. Look, you can sort of send me a tweet if you want. Uh, he says, how are you? Ashley, I'm really well. Uh, hang on, let me give out your Twitter name. Ash, Ashley ST78. There you go, done that. Uh, oh, hang on, oh, there's more tweets coming in. Uh, I'll do a bit of both, yeah? And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, who would win a fight between you both? <laughs> That's not about Noel Evans. Uh, I don't know, really. Uh, Noel, I suppose. Yeah, he's probably he's, he's an inch taller than me. Uh, yeah, probably Noel. He's probably fitter than I am. Um, <clears throat> Keith Chegwin. Uh, Gary Clark, ever had the inclination to, re <laughs> to release the remix to Brown Sauce as I just be a winner? No. But Noel Edmonds spoiled that song for me because many years ago uh, I was an actor and a singer. And I, as a singer, I was in a band called Kenny that got to number four in the charts a long, long time ago, singing a song called The Bump. Um, and I got thrown out of the band. <laughs> and so did my twin brother as well. Uh, but my wish was always to go on top of the pops. And when Brown Sauce with Noel Evans and Maggie Philbin went to, new, I think, number four or five in the charts, I can't remember, uh, we had our opportunity to go on top of the pops. And Noel said, no, 
he didn't want to do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he sport that one for me. But uh, no, no, no plans to re-release it. Um, oh, there you go. Well, I'll go back to Twitter and Mo. Um, Keith, um, Andrew McCann is the Binger host from us. All messages will be coming from him. Ah, that's just a little note from the team. That maybe I shouldn't have read out. Uh, James Brown, Keith, Andrew McCann. Oh, that's the same bloody... Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> somebody says stop saying Andrew McCann. Andrew McCann, Andrew McCann, Andrew McCann. There, there you go. Um, who are your comedy heroes? Oh, gosh. Um, do you know, I like the old comics. I mean, don't get me wrong, the new sort of, uh, I don't know whether you call them alternative now, uh, the new comics uh, do anecdotes and stories that tell jokes. Um, and it's a while since you he people hear a joke. You know, I do like, um, you know, the man went into a shop jokes or, you know, um, what has two legs and 58 legs in the evening? A man who collects legs and stupid jokes like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, I like the old comics. So, sort of like Ken Dodd, um, Frank Carson, uh, Jimmy Cricket, uh, people like that. I like the Chuckle Brothers. They are so bloody funny, you know. If you ever see them in Cabaret or Panto, worth watching because they are so funny. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the older comics. The new ones don't make me laugh so much. Uh, I've done a few gigs with them, and they're nice people, um, but I think they, uh, they're they better playing to their fans rather than corporate events, because some of the corporate events, basically, all they want is the old sort of style of humour, really, uh, not the anecdotal stories about, you know, how I got my arse trapped in a, you know, <laughs> a tube door and, and come out with expletives. It doesn't work at that sort of gig. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, and there's some comics that, I mean, a little bit controversial, I mean, uh, but a very funny. Bobby Davro is hysterical. You've ever seen his act? I mean, a lot of people, like, knock Jim Davidson, Bobby Davro, but you've got to go and see him live because they are so blooming funny. They really are. Um, <clears throat> uh, RVIP manager Hazel. <laughs> that came from Andrew. <laughs> Uh, Hazel wants to know if you're single, Jaggers. <laughs> uh, depends what she looks like. <laughs> uh, hey, Hazel. Just for Hazel. <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that one. No, no, no. <laughs> anyway. Oh, hang on a minute. Um, from Land's End to John O'Groats, I've travelled. Hi, hello. Uh, poor old Hazel. Yeah. <clears throat> Please, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> lovely. Uh, so yeah, another comedy heroes. Um, I, I like the old films, the old comic films. Um, uh, do you know what? Uh, Charlie Chaplin. I, I tell you, some that guy uh, and some of his cohorts of that sort of era were just so impressive at what they did. At making people laugh in silent movies, and that's really difficult to do. Um, and Laurel and Hardy with their slapstick stuff. Oh God, I sound so old, don't I? And I do apologise for it, but it's uh, quite interesting because I've got a son, and and he tends to watch uh, things like Open All Hours, uh, Del Boy, uh, Only Fools and Horses. Uh, uh, because of the humour and the comedy that's with it. They were classic sort of uh, comedies to watch, really. Uh, whereas the new sort of style of uh, comedy, especially on Radio 4 and some of the uh, other channels on TV, um, don't make me giggle out loud in the car. Or maybe that's why they're designed to do that, really, not to make you laugh whilst driving. Um, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, can you give a shout out to Michael Bedell and Tom Watson, who will be editing this video tomorrow. Hey, hey, good luck with that. Bloody hell, that'll take you a while, won't it? Editing? <laughs> uh, Hazel wants to know something else. Oh, Kaz wants to know, what's your favourite TV pro uh, What's the favourite TV programme you're in? Hazel is all right, not great. Oh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have read that bit. What's my, oh God, the favourite TV show I've been in? Do you know what? <clears throat> I like live TV. 
Uh, so the sort of live broadcasting I've done has been really entertaining, and I, I, I do appreciate that, because uh, I like to suck it and see ad-lib TV. But do you know what? <clears throat> I was here in this very studio uh, many years ago, got a phone call from this bloke. Uh, Hello, Jaggers. And I went, uh, who's that? It was me, and I couldn't work out what the heck was going on. Anyway, turned out it was Ricky Gervais, and once again, I thought it was John Colshaw. Uh, so I phoned the number back, and it was Ricky Gervais. And he turned around to me and he said, uh, look, he said, I got your number uh, by one of your mates. And he said, uh, I'm doing a series called Extras. Do you want to be in it? And I went, uh, I thought he was winding me up. And then he said, he said, well, what it is, he said, I've written a part, but it's not about you. He said, uh, it's a part that you have to act. Can you act? So I said, well, yeah, I've done a bit of acting in the past. And some people don't know, but I mean, I've made seven films, uh, like Polanski's Macbeth and The Optimist with Peter Sellers. I've done children's film, foundation films. Uh, I've been in Open All Hours. <laughs> I was in that. I was in The Lie of the Birds, uh, Black Beauty, uh, The Tomorrow People. I've advertised things in uh, Pepsi, uh, Tizer. I've done all the uh, ads and things as a kid. <clears throat> so I have done a bit of acting in the past, also in the West End. Tom Brown school days with Simon Le Bon <laughs> and Russell Grant. Hey, uh, lovely people. And I was also in a stage show called Mame uh, with a lady called Ginger Rogers. I don't know whether you remember her, old movie star. I had to tap dance with her in the West End at uh, Drury Lane. Anyway, so yes, I had done a bit of acting. So uh, it, I don't think he believed me because he said, look, will you come and read this part? Not for Jaggers, a part. And we'll see how we get on. So I went down there, did it. And uh, he was quite pleased with it. Um, so yes, I had a part in extras. But the funny thing was, uh, Rick is so generous. I have never worked with such a generous performer in the whole of my life. Um, he wants to make you star. He wants to make you look good. He's a lovely man, very funny man. And great to work with. Uh, and I said, look, I don't want to play, you know, the way hey thing. I want to play a sort of like a down version of me, uh, even though it wasn't written for me. Um, and he let me do it. Uh, so, you know, it was really nice uh, to be phoned up by somebody of that ill can stature in the world of comedy writing and uh, be trusted with their material. Anyway, later on, <laughs> I get another phone call from him and he said, Oh, I like checkers. He said, uh, we're doing a thing called Life's Too Short. He said, wanting to play a part in that. So I thought, oh. And while he was on the phone, I said, uh, who else is doing it? He said, uh, let me think. He said, um, we've got Liam Neeson, uh, let me look, Johnny Depp, and uh, you. <laughs> so, so it was really nice. And then he said, I've written an hour special for you, Sean Williamson and Les Dennis, uh, of Life's Too Short. And... He wants us to, to, to do that. And do you know what? I, it's the best fun I've ever had in the history of my, well, 49 years in show business. I've never laughed so much in a week uh, in my entire life, and I've never enjoyed something so much. But you know what? It's a, a wonderful feeling uh, to think that you've got Stephen Merchant and you've got Ricky Gervais trusting you with their material. I mean... Millions of pounds go into making these programs. They've chosen us three uh, to play the roles in, in their one-hour special. And that is a real honour. It really is. So um, thank you, Mickey. Hey, fingers crossed he's watching YouTube or M Fortune. Um, Ashley Steppings. Hello, Ashley. Oh, yay, yeah, he's on Twitter, will he? Um, on Twitter, would love to know what the donkeys on Blackpool Beach have for lunch an hour before everyone else. Oh, go on, what do they have? Is this a joke? It's got to be a joke, isn't it? I would love to know what the donkeys on Blackpool Beach have for lunch an hour before everyone else. Um, oh, I don't know. Way hey? <laughs> Not too sure. Um... Uh, Oh, gosh, you've got me thinking. Uh, no, no, you've got to give me the answer to that one, Ashley. Uh, shall I have a look at my Twitter feed uh, and give a little tweet as well, if I can? Here we go. Um, oh, he's written the same thing up here as well. <laughs> but he hasn't given us the answer. I don't want to spoil it for him. Uh, I love the fact that... I love, I love the fact the Carry On films are getting a reboot. If you're in it... What sort of role would you like? A sausage roll I'd like. 
Uh, I don't think they'd ever ask me, but um, yeah, it is quite nice that they're getting a revamp. They did do a revamp, didn't they? A while back that didn't pay off. And I think they've got to be very careful with those sort of shows because what they do is um, they've got to pick actors uh, to be funny rather than comics to be funny because comics are only funny in their own right, aren't they? They've got their hour act and that's what they do. But take them out of that role sometimes doesn't work, you know. Uh, I mean, Graham Norton would be fantastic because he's ad lib suck it and see TV. I love Graham Norton. Really do. Uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, <laughs> M Fortune just put up a tweet saying how much I loved uh, working with Steve Merchant and Ricky Gervais. Uh, exclamation at the end of his name. I thought, Hang on, what's going on there? Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'll. Oh no, let's keep Twitter going there. Hang on a minute. Um, we've got a few more questions. Uh, where are we? Oh, no, hang on, I don't know whether to go back to there or here. Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Can't get to it. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> Can't get it to work, some people are saying on YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> Shall I check it out? <laughs> Shall I just see? I'm sure it is. Um, hang on, hang on. Bear with me just a moment. Uh, it not... It's normally technically um, their side, not. Bingo out with Kevin, and there I am. It's working. Yeah, definitely working. So it's his fault, not ours. <clears throat> Lovely. Uh, what was your most embarrassing moment? Oh my God. Um, I've had so many. <clears throat> oh, I suppose a long time ago when I worked on a program called Swap Shop, and what it was, Swap Shop was a, a Saturday morning TV show for kids. And uh, that shot me to sort of fame, really, <laughs> if you can call it that. Um, and what it was, was a live three-hour TV show on Saturday mornings. And you know what? Those people who don't know how it came about was that the BBC at that time, uh, and as always, a bit strapped for cash. Um, so they were trying to sort of develop new ideas. And this woman, a uh, lady, lovely lady producer called Rosemary Gill, said, look, how about if we uh, leapfrog on the back of outside broadcast units that do sport? So rather than the sort of cameraman just filming, you know, football in the afternoon, they'd film us in the morning too. Uh, and they thought, that's a great idea because we'll save money. Uh, secondly, don't pay any guests that comes on. <laughs> Uh, and there was a choice once um, uh, for, put, for having the uh, Jackson 5 on or just Michael Jackson. And so we just had Michael Jackson because it was cheaper. Um, but anyway, it was a three-hour live Saturday morning program with Noel Evans, Keith Jagger, John Craven, Maggie Philbin. And I did the outside broadcasts. And one of the uh, most embarrassing outside broadcasts was I was at the Roman Baths in Bath. And I'd actually been given permission to actually swim in the Roman Baths which is like, God, so lucky. And, you know, to swim in the springs down there, beautiful Roman baths. And then live on TV, I sort of dived in. And as I did, my trunk slipped down and I showed half my bum uh, to 7 million kids. So that was really embarrassing, especially because, you know, my first sort of time uh, on TV, really. And, oh, gosh, there was another embarrassing moment. I went to Rill, right, to do um, some filming. And whilst I was there, we were invited out uh, for lunch at the Lord Mayor's table with about 10 people sat around it. And uh, anyway, I made a phone call because mobiles weren't around in those days. I made a phone call, um, uh, you know, to a mate. And while I was on the phone, he said, where are you? I said, I'm in Rill. And he went, oh, he said, Rill? He said, uh, I had to go there once. I said, well, what for? He said, I was filming this guy who wrote this bloody awful song called... Rillsville is Thrillsville, to which I laughed my head off. Anyway, I went back to the table laughing, and they said, what are you laughing at? And I turned around to the Lord Mayor and his guests and, you know, the film crew and us, and I said, oh, I've just been laughing because I've been chatting to a mate of mine who said he had to come here filming this guy who wrote this awful song called Rillsville is Thrillsville. And a woman on the opposite side of the table said, oh, that's my husband. <laughs> Uh, there was no way out of it. I was so embarrassed. And she actually agreed with me. She, she actually turned around and said, actually, it was crap. <laughs> anyway, so two embarrassing moments there. 
the screen is just juxtaped. Uh, have I not wound down? Hang on, I've just got to make sure I'm in the right place. Um, Keith, can you describe your current mood using your piano? <laughs> can you hear this? Hang on, I don't know whether you can. Um, <laughs> maybe you can. Strong. What's going on there? I pressed the wrong buttons. Hang on. In my studio at home, folks. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what can I do? Doggy doodles, pussy poopers, belly big jobs. Horsey dumps, cow pats, lekker lekker logs. If it gets to come, you thought you'll be a lucky little box. Stomp it in the carpet whilst at work. Happy. That's my mood at the moment. <laughs> uh, a lot of people want to ask me what I do here. And um, I edit a lot of corporate videos, uh, either own them or I'm out of them. Uh, I like, I make jingles. I used to write uh, jingles for Chris Moores on Radio One. And uh, some of the things that you see on TV, and uh, I've actually done here in my home, edited and um, but yeah, put on the telly. Uh, so yeah, I do a lot of work here, really. Yeah, love it. It's my home, <laughs> and you're welcome to it. Uh, Samantha wants to know, what's your favourite food? Oh, God, I eat everything. Really? Do. No, my favourite food is mince. You can do a lot with mince. You really can. Uh, you can have it with pasta. You can make pies with it. Uh, or you can make it into sausages, beef burgers. Oh, mince is so adaptable, isn't it? I like mince. Yeah, really do like mince. Um, I never really think about what I eat, really. Um, I mean, I, I've just been on tour. I've done uh, five weeks of Beauty and the Beast. Uh, and do you know what? Being on tour, uh, it's not the accommodation, it's not the show, it's what to bloody well eat. Because there's so much rubbish around. And I'm fed up of all the cafe bars that just do sandwiches that have been, you know, there for three or four hours. Um, so, yeah, getting things to eat <coughs> is a real struggle when you're on the road, really. Um, but mind you, there's lots of uh, apps around now, isn't there, where you can order food from restaurants. But do you trust them, really? Don't know. Don't know. I'm not too sure about it. Don't end up with deli belly, really, do you? <clears throat> you dine to cough, but you don't. Don't like that sort of food. Uh, but I suppose mints. I do a lot of cooking, and I really, really do enjoy cooking. Um, you know, I cook for the family, and I like doing roasts at the weekends and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, actually, I, I always I, I love a roast. I really do. Uh, but you have to get your spuds right because it all comes from your spuds, doesn't it? And you have to cook them in lard or beef dripping or even goose fat is really good. It's not good for you at all, really, is it? But in moderation, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I like uh, a roast dinner with all, all the tri oh, Brussels sprouts. I I'm starting to get hungry already. Uh, yeah, uh, what's your favourite food? Jess Blue wants to know if you like dogs. I love dogs. I really do. Never used to. Used to hate them. Uh, I used to be so frightened of dogs. Because uh, as a kid, I, I never sort of like had a pet. I had a budgie called Bloodwin Del Back. Uh, but when I went away, my mum, I think, let it out the cage. It bloody flew away. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had a budgie. And then I always had a fear of dogs. And even when I was sort of like working on live TV, uh, I try and let somebody else interview anyone that brought the dog on. I had to interview, uh, <laughs> I've got to get this right because I got it wrong on live TV. Guide, oh, I've done it again. No, I said live on TV, blind dogs for the guides, <laughs> which should have been guide dogs for the blind. But I, even then, when I was interviewing uh, the person and their dog, I was so, I was fretful, I really was. So what I did, <clears throat> uh, I went out and bought a border collie, and I brought it home. And nobody liked the dog because it was the wrong colour; it was brown and white. Uh, but I will tell you what, she was the best dog ever. Uh, she lived for 17 years, hollied the collie, and that dog was absolutely fantastic. So now I have a real uh, love of dogs, and we've got two at home. Uh, they're both Staffordshire Bull Terriers, which supposedly have this dreadful reputation, but they're not. They're really lovely friends. They call them the nanny dog. They're really friendly little animals. animals. Um, and it's awful because they sleep on our bed, and sometimes when it gets cold, in it. And I don't care. 
<laughs> so yeah, I do love dogs. And do you know what? I never used to like cats. And then uh, in my old house, uh, this cat came up the drive. <laughs> Whilst I was in Panto, my wife phoned up, so cat's come up the drive. And then we're going to keep it. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> you're going to give it back to where, where, wherever it came. Because uh, they get on your work surface and all that rubbish, don't they? Anyway, this cat, total dream, Kit Kat. And uh, for some other reason, she latched herself onto me. And that cat came, literally, I'd walk across for a country walk and that cat would follow me everywhere. <clears throat> and so much so that when I went away for a week, she'd sit on the front step and pine for me. And when I came back, uh, oh, she was all over us. Uh, but most of my time was spent in my old house with me sat at the kitchen with the cat on the right hand side on the table. She was a lovely girl. Anyway, unfortunately she passed away, but we've got another cat now, Lily, who's an absolute treasure and a dream. And she's on Vine. Uh, <clears throat> if you look up uh, Keith Chagrin on Vine, uh, uh, would you be able to see? I, I don't know how to give you the link to it, um, but I've done a few comedy things on Vine, and there's a shot of my cat. Uh, that literally follows you everywhere. You know, if you follow small wife across the horses, uh, to the field of the horses, and oh, she's fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, we wouldn't be without a cat now. Uh, was being in the big brother house, says Ashley Stebbings, boring. Um, a lot of the time it was, because there was nothing to do, so it was boring. Uh, but with the team I had, oh, my gosh. Uh, who's that woman? Katie Hopkins. Oh, God. Pain in the bloody neck, that woman. Uh, didn't like her much. Thought she was quite cruel to everybody, really. Very harsh. She never picked an argue with me, because... Uh, oh, she never picks an argument with anyone who can argue back. Uh, so she's quite a tough lady. Uh, and a, a bit of a shame, really, because she spoiled uh, the atmosphere there in the house. Um, I, a big Brother was fantastic. I, I actually really enjoyed doing it. Okay, it was boring, uh, but it was a great show to be on. You know, it's funny because, oh, how, I don't know how to explain this to you, really. Um, right, I go on tour for five weeks doing panto, and sometimes I'm in one town uh, doing panto, and I go out filming uh, with a team of people. But what I'm saying is I'm used to that environment of being with six, seven people for weeks on end. So there's no difference uh, doing Big Brother than there is doing Panto. Uh, apart from the people in Panto, quite nice. <laughs> um, but Big Brother is hard for people like sports personalities or models or bodybuilders or journalists because they're not used to that environment. So you know, I'm not saying I can handle uh, uh, folk as well as everybody else, I'm probably the same as you, but uh, I'm probably a bit more accommodating and a bit used to that environment. So being in a house with, uh, for four weeks with a bunch of nurses is not really a problem. Uh, it's how to fill your day is a bit of a problem on Big Brother. But they're very clever, you know. There's lots of things that you don't see, and I'm not sort of spilling the beans here, uh, but they do put you in a room together for four hours <laughs> whilst they're doing something in another room. And I'm not sure they're doing anything at all. But what happens is, is you're in that close proximity uh, with 11 other celebrities, and they all want to get out, they all want to go have a cigarette, they want a cup of coffee, they want a drink, they want a pee break. And so the tension builds and builds and builds and builds, an argument starts, and then they open the door, and then they film it all. So it's I loved it, really did. Had a great time um, sort of spotting all the cameras. Uh, listening to Big Brother, who's very clever, really clever, uh, with some of the challenges that they get you to do, because basically they're playing off against uh, each other all the time. Uh, and then you've got Katie Hopkins in the middle of that, playing everybody else off against each other as well. Uh, but if you're a celebrity and you're watching, a bit of advice for you. Celebrity Big Brother. Basically what you do is when you get into the house, you make mates with six people and you make real mates with those six people. And basically, when it comes to voting, you know that six people are going to vote you off. And then six people, then one person leaves the house, so it's five against six, and it goes on and on and on like that. So basically, make as many pals as you can within the first few days, and once you've got that circle of close-knit friends around you, you've got less chance of being booted off. I didn't play a game. I didn't know what was going on. Some people played that game, uh, but I was just there to enjoy myself. 
And the money wasn't too bad either. <laughs> there you go. Uh, waxed on a bit about that one, I think. Um, uh, does your son want to go into show business? I've got a son and a daughter. Uh, my daughter's in America. She's working over there for a finance company. But tech side of things. Uh, my son, uh, no, he doesn't want to go into show business at all. He's very bright in his art house. Uh, yeah, he likes his music and uh, he's very good at maths. And uh, I'm very proud of him because he's just passed his driving test. So well done, Ted. Uh, good lad. <clears throat> uh, can you play a Radio 1 jingle we you know? And do you know what? Uh, I can play a few jing. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to have to move a little. Is it bright? Shall I turn the lights up a bit? Is it bright enough? Because uh, I've got to go to this computer over here. Um, it's where I do a lot of my other work. Uh, where are we going? Um, let's have a look at my desktop and just see. Uh, do you, know what? <laughs> you have to forgive me for a minute. Um, well, let me look up. Um, oh gosh! Wait there, wait there, wait there, wait there, wait there. What have I got them in? I'm trying to find. I've got so much stuff on here. I can't tell you. Let's take that down from. Oh, I've got a few tracks to complain you. Um, oh, this is what I'm writing at the moment. Um, see what you think. Play the guitar as well. Like oh no, hang on. I've just closed the blooming thing there, haven't I? Uh, <laughs> idiot. Keep going. Oh, there. Trying to find my jingles. Where the bloody hell are my jingles? Uh, I've got a whole file of them somewhere. Live now. No, no, it's not that. Oh, no, don't. I've got loads. I've got Chappers and Dave. Oh, do you remember this? <clears throat> this jingle uh, was on Radio 1, and they said to people you could download it, and it still holds the record for the highest downloads ever, and it's the most stupidest jingle in the whole wide world. Uh, Chappers and Dave uh, did their own show, and this is it. Chappers and Dave, Chappers and Dave. Running round the country in tight shorts look so good. Patty bums and tight tight tums of girls I bet you would. Two sweaty lads with bulging thighs at your football club. I run a mile and make me smile, oh boys, you look so good. Oh, lovely, lovely boys. That was one. Um, I won't play you that because that's a rude song. Chris Miles. Ah, oh, what's that one? Oh God! Oh, there's loads. I don't want to put them all. I've got. I've actually got. Is it there? I get rid of a lot of stuff. Oh, I'll leave it for now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've got loads of jingles. <clears throat> oh, what was this one? Uh, his opening theme, I'll play. When I wake up in the morning, I'm in a lot of trouble for this one. Go away. I know exactly what you're doing. Hang on. Quit logic. Uh, don't save. Bring up that main screen. Right, cool. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I open, open my, oh no, <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, open my eyes a bit, I can still taste last night's curry, and I really need a shave. Anyway, there you go. Uh, enough of that. Uh, what we're doing? Uh, can I give a shout out? Uh, what's your most embarrassing moment? Uh, 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 our VIP manager Hazel is now asking if you can do a sexy dance. Uh, no, Hazel, will you stop it? Even I'm embarrassed. Uh, sexy dance. No, you can join me with a song if you want. One of the favourite uh, dis uh, disco classics of all time it goes like this. Sing with me. And come by, our Lord, come by, God. Come by, our Lord, come by, our Lord. Come by, our Lord, come by, our Lord. Oh, Lord, come by, our. I know you want it, don't you? <laughs> right, enough of that. Um, can you give a shout out? Oh, well, uh, our host Haley, she loves you. Mum of five wants to know: uh, Do famous people eat pot noodle too, or is it just? Poor people. Uh, it's just poor people, I'm afraid. <laughs> pop, I love hot noodle. I do. Uh, uh, I like Uncle Ben's rice as well. I love rice. You just throw an egg in it, can't you? And make egg fried rice. Really good, isn't it? Um, I got. Uh, can shout out for, for jam jams. Can you give a shout out for Jan's mum and a VIP winner? Hey! We like VIP winners. Very important people, VIP winners. Lovely. Hey, <laughs> congratulations, Jan's mum. Can you make up you can you make up can you make up on the spot and play us a misfortune uh, sorry. <laughs> An unfortunate jingle. Uh, yeah, so we try and make um, what was that fortune rhyme with? Um, Dosh, money, dosh. Um, I, I'm trying to think of something that rhymes with M fortune. There's only things like m misfortune and that sort of thing, isn't there? So it's not a misfortune, it's a money fortune. That's what you want to. Um, oh. Hang on. Oh, I've got to try to think of something to write now. Um, let me write. I like to make uh, I like <laughs> I like to make some money. On M fortune. I can't think of anything. It's dreadful when you put on the spot. Uh, come back spoon. <laughs> What's that mean? Come back spoon. Um, who is your celebrity crush? Oh gosh, 
Celebrity crush. Oh my god. Oh, that is a, that is the toughest question I've ever been asked in the whole of my life. Um, I like Claudia Winkle, but <laughs> she's quite a character, isn't she? She's quite funny, and she sort of like ad libs and makes it up. So I like Claudia Winkle. Oh, she was a crush though. Oh God! Oh, that is the toughest question in the whole wide world. My celebrity crush. No, I can't think of anybody really. Uh, this is a test to see if you really out. <laughs> Andrew, that's great. Andrew's written a little test and it says, this is a test to see if you read out absolutely anything we write here. And the answer is probably, yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> funny, isn't it? But uh, my eyesight's not very good and I was at an award ceremony because I do a lot of hosting, um, like awards and sort of corporate gigs. Because people think that, you know, um, what's the word? What, what People always ask, what do you actually do? I had to explain that to a client the other day. I have an act. I go out on stage for an hour and perform. Uh, and I do, you know, years ago I used to have my own band. Uh, and that... Before you think I started singing on stage of the band, I didn't. I had a two-hour stage show that I produced and did myself, uh, which is with the audience participation and that sort of thing. But there was three moments in the show that that band struck up for me, and that was, whack the monsters on, I don't care what you think, I'm singing a song. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, and I do corporate hosting. Um, so I do sort of like you know 20 minutes at the top, games, interactivity with the audience and that sort of thing. Uh, and then I host the awards for them as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and I love it. I really do. I love, I love my job. I'm, I think I'm the luckiest person in the whole wide world. Um, and the other thing is, um, which sounds an awful attitude to have, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, no one can blackmail me with careers or prospects. You know, I had one guy saying, well, if you ever do that again, you won't be on our show. So I did it again. <laughs> and then I wasn't on his show, but I don't care. Because uh, I just enjoy life. Uh, I, I, hopefully, I'm a trustworthy person with live content. You know, I never sort of come out with any obscenities or embarrass people or that sort of thing. I mean, I worked on a program called The Big Breakfast, and they were continually asking me as a presenter, oh, show people up, embarrass them, you know, go for them. And I, I could never do that because I think the general public sometimes do it themselves. I mean, if you go into somebody's house and it's a mess, you don't go, oh, look at their house, it's a mess, because there's a television camera there that can see that their house is a mess. Uh, but it was... The Big Breakfast was probably one of the edgiest shows I've done, really, uh, because they really used to throw you into it. Like, we go, used to go and uh, surprise celebrities live on TV, genuinely knock on their door without knowing that they were coming. You could never do that now. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we and then we sort of, like, edged things up a little bit and um, went into their hotels and found them in their bedrooms. I mean, I knocked on one door <clears throat> and uh, a guy opened the door semi-naked and there was Michaela Strachan naked in bed. Uh, <laughs> you know, and we used to do all Steve Cook and Jeremy Clarkson in their hotel bedrooms. So I think it was a real naughty bit of television. Um, but we could do anything in those days. I mean, you know, if you had an idea, uh, you could do it. I mean, I had an idea about taking a, a, a sheep down a street in Wales because it was sheep dipping week and giving it a bath in somebody's house. And my boss said, yeah, go on, do it. So we did do it. Anyway, knocked on this guy's door, and I've got a sheep here, right? Knocked on the guy's door, and he opened the door and went, oh, F me, it's Jaggers. And I went, you're on live TV, you can't swear. And he went, eh, oh. <laughs> he said, you knocked on my door. <laughs> I didn't ask you to come. And all these expletives were coming out very funny. We had not one complaint, not one complaint. But, uh, very edgy show, very naughty show. Loved it. Uh, can I give a shout out to Lucky B and Brandy? Good luck to you both. Hope you're playing M Fortune Bingo at the moment. And uh, yeah, yeah. The dosh comes rolling in for you. Uh, what is your biggest regret and why? And if you could play any character in any film, what would that be and why? What is your biggest regret? Um, oh, God. Uh, I suppose doing that naked thing, really. Um, yeah, 
Uh, that was, I suppose that was the only sort of thing, really, that I regret. Uh, no, nothing else. No. Because uh, anything I've done, if I've done it and I get blamed for it, I take it on the chin. And... Uh, and a lot of people do knock me. I mean, I don't like that. that if you think that bothers me, think again, because it doesn't. I enjoy it. It actually makes me laugh. Um, but no, I've had no regrets, really. I suppose lost opportunities. Uh, but I think we all get them in life, really, don't we? Um, so, no. Oh, God, do you know what? That is so tough, isn't it? You really throw that? At, f -f 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 no, no regrets. No, not none at all. Uh, I suppose in a way, I'm coming back to it now, um, I'd, I'd like to have carried on with my acting a little bit more uh, and done a bit more acting. Uh, but it's difficult nowadays unless you do a, a you know, a pass a Ricky Gervais thing uh, or play, you know, yourself in something else. Um, that I don't think I'll ever get offered, you know, a job in a crime thriller or a movie. Uh, <laughs> maybe the... 20th century and on your right in some Roman movie or something maybe as an extra uh, but I don't think you know they'd even ask me to do a small part in you know a James Bond movie or like that because people go oh it's Jaggers you know what and <clears throat> um, uh, I did a movie many years ago called Polanski's Macbeth and it was on at Swiss Cottage so I thought oh, let's see that again because you can't get it couldn't get it out on DVD or tape or anything in those days and um, so I went with a mate of mine right so I'm sitting there in the seats at the Swiss Cottage uh, Cinema and uh, the movie starts and my name comes up in big letters <laughs> Keith Chagrin and one member of the audience went oh hey not Jaggers <laughs> and then when it came on the whole audience went came I was so embarrassed. I left all the other movies people couldn't see I was there. You know. Uh, so I've done Lucky B and Brandy. Good luck to you both. Uh, would you have uh, rather have a one minute conversation? Would you rather have a one minute conversation with your previous self or your future self? And what do you think you talk about? What? Um, your future self? No, I don't. I can't answer any of those questions. <laughs> They're really tough. I'd like to have a, a, a conversation with my previous self, because um, maybe I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit too jolly on the telly, and I'd like to ask myself sometimes, why are you being so jolly? Uh, I know the answer to it because uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and uh, I, I do enjoy my job. I really do. You know, I, there's not a lot of people who can say that, and I really look forward to getting up in the morning. So I don't sleep. Uh, even my doctor's worried about that. <laughs> I get about sort of three or four hours a night, sometimes five if I'm really lucky. Um, but. Uh, I'm not a motivated person. I'm just a day-to-day -day person. I enjoy what I'm doing today and I move on to the next day. You know? And I'm so lucky because every day is different what I do. So, like, you know, this week I was filming for something and then I was doing a, a corporate gig uh, and then I uh, did a hosting for It's Knockout. I love me It's Knockout days. I can't tell you. It's, um, I do a lot of corporate It's a Knockout in the country where, you know, camaraderie between the kind of, uh, company folk, you know, like um, Microsoft all get together and we play games and competitions, but secretly in my own head, it's fat people doing thin things, isn't it? <laughs> it's Ms. Tesco versus the bank manager. Like I had a guy come up to me and he said, oh, you know, I can do the Marlin for this. And I went, yeah, fine. And as he walked away, I just laughed to myself, yeah, by saying in my own head, yeah, you try doing that in a chicken outfit, mate. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd do a lot of different things each day, and then tomorrow I've got a meeting about a web thing that I'm doing, and so it goes on. Uh, and each, I'm, I'm very lucky to be in that privileged situation. If it all goes tomorrow, don't care. Uh, Samantha wants to know if you like country, if you like country and western, and what's your favourite song? Do you know what? I don't like country and western music that much. Um, but there are... Uh, I went to Memphis, I was filming in Memphis, and I went to a country and western music festival, 
Bloody brilliant. Can't tell you. Absolutely brilliant. It's not my ideal choice of music, but I do appreciate it. You know, and it's weird because it's the world's, um, I don't know whether you know this, the uh, biggest selling uh, music in the whole wide world. It outweighs uh, classical music and contemporary music. It's a huge, huge thing. Uh, it's not my thing, but there's certain um, uh, people in the country and what music, I don't know the names, but I do appreciate it. I really do. Um, but Memphis, oh my God, what a place that is. Blooming brilliant. Everyone's playing country and western music on the street. Absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. <laughs> I've got your test. Do you like football? And if so, who are your teams? No, I don't. Uh, and actually, I don't know whether you know, but England are playing Poland tonight. So a lot of people will be doing that rather than watching this. Uh, you couldn't have picked a better time. Worst time. Uh, uh, the EastEnders is on. Anyway, um, football, no. You know why? When I was a kid, I went to a West Ham versus Everton match, and the guy next to me threw up. I thought, that's a bit much. Covered my shoes. And then I looked to my left, and guy's got a Sun newspaper out. He's having a pee down it. He's on the terraces. And then people behind, the language was absolutely appalling, the things they were saying to the players. So it did put me off football. My family are real huge football fans. They really are. I mean, they're, they're you know, glued to the box. Any match that comes on, it doesn't matter, but not me. I do like the matches, uh, so maybe I might have watched a bit of England play tonight, uh, but on the other hand, maybe not. Uh, but the European Cup is coming up soon, isn't it, in Europe? Uh, so I probably will, you know, be behind uh, the teams, you know, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales watching that. Uh, that's if all four of them are in. I don't even know it, but I'm sure they are. So, yeah, uh, if we've got a chance, uh, you know, of any of our sort of yeah, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, win, I'm with them. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, oh, have I jumped a whole lot of things? Uh, if you could play any character in any film, what would it be and why? Oh, God, I'd like to play a baddie, a real baddie. Really, I'd have a go at that. Yeah, somebody evil and nasty. Uh, but mind you, most people like me say that, don't they? Um, so I'd like to take part in a comedy series. Yeah, a comedy film. That would be quite nice. Uh, with Ricky Gervais, I'd love that. Because uh, he's such a great person to play off. Oh, my God, you can't... Do you know what? I'm not mocking him, but you can't work with him because he's always laughing. And, like, you do a take, and it's really good for you, but it's really bad... Because he's laughing. So he, he ruined his thing. Not intentionally. It's just that he's funny to work with. Um, we did a scene in Extras, uh, which is about uh, the BBC and whether it's done or run by certain people. He wrote these lines, not me. Uh, and I had to do this little thing on the screen. Uh, and I could say pop knob in Fanny, you see. Uh, oh, my God. It took me two and a half hours to film that one little sequence that lasted 30 seconds because Ricky Gervais was laughing so much. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, it, even when I watch it, it makes me laugh because uh, the memorable time it was and uh, what a nutcase he is. Lovely bloke. Uh, I've done Lucky Being Brandy. Uh, uh, what's your favourite song? Oh, I could be here for hours. Uh, it says here we're going to take a 10 minute break after all the above questions. And we'll text you when we come back. You know, take a ten minute break. Uh, I do a little play out. Uh, no, not one. Uh, what can I play out with? Um, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, little play out for you. Uh, something that lasts thirty seconds. What can I do? Uh, that. See you in thirty. Uh, see you in about ten minutes. See you in about. Bye.
is writing, is writing something. Uh, oh, M Fortune, I've <laughs> muted my sound. Uh, but I'm back now. Can you hear me? Hello. Just testing. One, two, three. Your mic, your phone is muted. One, two, one, two. Is it really? Hang on. Can you hear me? Oh, good. You can hear me. Good. Oh, God. I've been rude for a minute then. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm back with you. Back with a vengeance. M Fortune, look, there's the website, mfortune.co.uk. Uh, yeah, join us. We're on YouTube, broadcasting all over the world. Yeah, in fact, I've got um, a tweet from San Diego, and it says, uh, Come on, Checkers, did you ever get the pegs back? Yeah, oh, I can't tell you. Yeah, somebody stole um, <laughs> my wife's knickers off the line. I mean, I don't mind you stealing the knickers, but I want the 40 pegs back. Is that all right? He was just asking about that. That's Horace Limp on Twitter. Hello, Horace Limp. <laughs> what a great name, isn't it, really? Uh, oh, we're judging things uh, soon, and that's a poetry competition. Yes, yeah, so we asked you to write in uh, your little poems about me. Probably very rude. Uh, our players have been very busy to write new poems. They'd love you to read them out for you. Oh, great. Yeah, there was a girl from Devizes who had boobs of different sizes. Go on. <laughs> oh, look at this. Um, Tony Hurst has written this little one. Really? I'm going to chat to Keith Cheggers. He might bring me luck, as I am Preggers. It may be a line, but Full House could be mine. So bring on the chat, Mr. Cheggers. Like it. Oh, very good. That's Tony Hurst. Oh, I've got another tweet now. Uh, Tony Hurst. Oh, uh, Horace Limp says, uh, thanks, Keith. Uh, bloody expensive pegs these days. <laughs> Wouldn't want them better. Uh, Tony, we like that. Oh, you're in the lead so far. Mind you, I've only had one. Um, so bring on the chat, Mr. Chagas. Uh, this one's from Sean Gilfoy. Uh, Gilfoyle, sorry. Uh, got a hat with chat. Oh, God, hang on. It's got a shut up. Um, right. So bring on the chat. Cheggers, this one's right. Anytime, any place, anywhere. Got a hat with Cheggers, I'll share. It's a bright one. He'll look a right one. <laughs> look, you keep Cheggers. That's quite good, that, isn't it? Very good. And these are all the M Fortune players. Great interaction. Love it. Really love it. This is this is what the web's about. M Fortune. Chatting to bingo players, having a bit of a laugh. Do you know what? On this, I could take phone calls. I really could. I could do loads. Or maybe sort of like involve you in video chats as well. I'd love to do that. Uh, we'll have to think about it. This one's from Kelly Ann uh, Rankin. Uh, oh, check as you are, my Keith. Sometimes I wish I had your teeth. <laughs> so wisdom and, and wise, what beautiful eyes. I know you will give me a big surprise. <laughs> I like it. Bit creepy that one. Yeah, a bit worried about you. You're a stalker of that, aren't you? Hey, thanks, Kelly Ann Rankin. Appreciate that one. Uh, this one's from Sarah Connell. Sarah Connell, all the best to you, Sarah. I hope your bingo's going well. Um, roses are red, Facebook is blue. Here comes Cheggers to wish me luck. Oh, there's a bit more. <laughs> there's a bit more down the screen. Uh, oh, God, I've lost you now. Uh, wish me luck. Yeah, that's not bad, Sarah. Yeah, very good. Um, and from uh, Mac Gilveray, there was... Oh, stop moving the bloody screen up. <laughs> uh, there was a young called Eggers whose fat, bum, whose fat tum made him look preggers. <laughs> he found a new diet, so he had to try it. And now he's as thin as the beggars. I like it. Very good. Very good indeed. Uh, Vicky Bateman uh, playing M Fortune. Uh, good news. Uh, he's he's laughing like a tot. I'll wipe the smile right off his face when I hit the diamond jackpot. <laughs> I hope you do. I hope you do. Go on, win it for me. Uh, I'll go arms with you. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, right, Shelley Pyle. Unfortunate surname, that, isn't it? Um, hello to Cheggers. Hope he goes pop. He is awesome. Hope you have a good chat and win all that. 
Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. I think Tony's in the lead so far, along with, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to have to wind back and have a look at them all again. I don't want to sort of like do it willy-nilly, you know, got to award it properly, really, haven't I? Oh, I've got my camera now. Uh, right, Shelley Marlon, Elaine Willen uh, says, My childhood was a blast, it really has to be sad. Because every Saturday morning I had Keggers in my head. Now I'm an adult and looking for some fun. Here comes Keggers again to bring me lots of luck. Oh, I like it. That's nice. Thank you, Elaine. Appreciate that. Oh, they're bloody good. Are you? You've been working your socks off, you lot. Have you? Well done. Very good. And uh, Tammy Neal. I can't wait to chat to Cheggers. He might bring me luck. Let's play on Fortune and have a good day. It may be a line, but a full house could be mine. So let's play bingo, Mr. Chingo. Mr. Chingo? Where's he come from? <laughs> There's not a lot of lines of bingo, really, is there? Very good, Tammy. Thank you. Uh, Tanya Harford. So just in this... Oh, blowing out. Hang on. I'll go back again. Tanya Harford. So check us in this Thursday with the M Fortune staff. I'm sure you'll all be up for a laugh. A great old chap. Old oh, chap. <laughs> I'm sure he'll do fine. Come on, check us. Call out my line. <laughs> hey, that's another idea for him, Fortune. I could be the bingo caller. I could be calling the numbers for you. Yeah. Two fat ladies. Worst threesome I've ever had. Um, I got, I got, uh, I've done that. What am I? Andrew Bayram. Hi, Andrew. Hope you're doing well. Hope uh, Lady Luck is shining on you. His name is Keith. And be believed that he bring luck to the players. Payment for them to receive. Oh, I see. Very clever. When the ball start rolling and the game begins, is everyone ready for Mr. Cheguin? Begins, wins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not bad, Andrew. Yeah. Fingers crossed you have a Cheg win tonight. Cheg win. Rather than Cheg lose. I don't know why I bother being creative. <clears throat> uh, Andrew, that's very good. Uh, they're all good, aren't they? Georgina Dow, Keith Cheggers is here to play us some bingo, and I'm going to win. You just never know. It's all fun all around as Cheggers plays pop. Maybe the fun will never stop. As we wave them off at the end of the day, we say, come back soon. We want you to stay. <laughs> <laughs> They're very creative, aren't they? This is so tough. I hate judging competitions. I really do. Do you know what? I had to judge an art competition once uh, for kids. And I went down to, um, oh, some art gallery, the Tate Modern. No, no, it was just the Tate those days. Um, and there's all these arty-farty people from The Guardian, The Times, looking at these kids' paintings going, oh, this is wonderful. Look, this is the Monet. And this reminds me of, uh, you know, a whatnot. So I was going, hang on, kids don't paint that. His mother's done it. And I chose a kid that had done a bus. And it was really, you know, kids painting bus. And they all poo-pooed me. And the kid didn't win. Yeah, and they chose this picture, which was like a mono painting. Bloody kid hadn't done that. Um, and we've done you. Yeah, we've done you. Uh, Je Jessica Bettinson. Hello. Hello, Jessica. Uh, hey, Keith. With your rosy red cheeks, let's check us. Let's check us. Check us over to Bingo and meet BB and all have fun and maybe a bingo party. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you saying it. Andrew Smith Roses. Oh, no, no, hang Andrew Smith. It's difficult. I wonder if I can wedge that. I can't move that side panel, can I? No. Uh, because they're not written in line order, so I've got to adjust things as we go. Uh, right, Ruins is red, Cheggers is nude. <laughs> I have a better poem, but well, hey, too crude. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, oh, that one. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Sean Gilfoy, I've done this one, haven't I? Uh, any time, any place, anywhere, got a hat with Keith Cheggers, I'll share. It's a bright one. It look a right one. Look, look, keep check hairs like that. Uh, that's it. Oh, can I choose my favourite? Well, I am going to have to scroll back a little bit, aren't I? Um, well, quite a way, actually. Uh, so they're all very good. Sarah Connell's good. 
Stephen McGilfrey, very good indeed. Um, let me just read. Um, uh, here we are. You know what? I like the first one. I'm afraid it's a long way back. I know. But I'm going to read it for you again. Tony Hurst. That's the one I like. Uh, uh, Tony Hurst. I'm going to go right back to the top. Um, so try not to. Oh, you keep moving my thing, you naughty people. Um, whoever wins gets a bingo bonus, which I love. I like the bingo bonus. Um, Do you know what? I'm going to be really, really naughty on M Fortune because I'm going to choose a winner. But and I'll tell you who the winner is first, right? It's Tony Hurst because I like it, and it's very easy. It's a lovely one to read. I'm going to chat with Keith Cheggers. He might bring me luck as I'm preggers. It may be a line, but full house could be fine. So bring it on. Bring on the chat, Mr. Cheggers. I like that. So Tony, you are the winner. But I'm going to be really naughty, and I'm sure Unfortunate will back me up. We'll give you all bonuses, yeah? Can't say how much, but um, they'll sort it all out. Uh, but I, I seriously think for your time and your enthusiasm, uh, my appreciation to you is to give you all a bonus. And uh, Yeah, oh, fantastic. Yeah, great. Unfortunate have backed me up. I knew they would because they're lovely people to deal with and play with as well. So, look, you've all got a bit of a bonus, yeah? Can't say how much, I don't know how much, but enjoy it, yeah, and I hope it brings you luck. That's what I like about bingo, yeah, you know, bingo bonuses. <laughs> uh, years ago, when I used to go and play bingo, and uh, somebody give you an extra card, it's fantastic, isn't it? Because you never know, you might win with that. Uh, I'd love to know what you'd like to spend your money on if you won, though. Um, what's some of your favourite swap shop <laughs> memories? Oh, God. do you know what? The, 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 uh, the one that always stands out in my mind uh, was the outside broadcast that we never did. Uh, I went to a Boyne in Scotland, a Boyne, a uh, lovely little place. But it was so cold. I can't tell you. It was freezing. And it was something like, you know, 12 degrees below. And literally, if you put your hand on a scaffolding pole, it would stay there. And I said to my producer, look, all these kids have turned up. This is really, you know, seriously dangerous. <laughs> my boss turned around. He was fantastic. He said, uh, he gave all the kids uh, presents and things from Swap Shop. And he told them all to go home because uh, it was too cold. Uh, it was on a par with uh, Russia or uh, that's, a, that's how cold it was. But we never did an outside broadcast that day because the weather uh, was so freezing cold. And one of the other ones... <clears throat> I think what a lot of people uh, don't remember about the shop is how serious it was. Um, and my boss always turned around to us and said, this is not a children's programme. And she used to tell me off uh, for sort of uh, curbing my words, making it easier for kids. She said, no, 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 this is an adult show that hopefully the kids will get. So like we, had, we did have serious news on the show. And we had politicians like Edward Heath and uh, people like that of the day uh, where we do real serious issues and interviews with kids. And even on um, Saturday Superstore, which followed after that, we had serious interviews with politicians. I always remember Margaret Thatcher being asked by one of the kids on, the, uh, on a phone call, and, where will you be, <laughs> he said to Margaret Thatcher, when the bomb goes off? She couldn't answer the question. She was really stuck. And she waffled around it like some politician does. Uh, and then uh, reinforced the question. I said, yeah, that's fine. But where will you be when the bomb goes off? She wouldn't let her off a hook. It was fantastic. It was a lovely question that was um, put to Margaret Thatcher. And I'm not sure whether it was on another show that I did or it was on uh, Saturday Superstore or Swap Show. No, it was Saturday Superstore. Um, and that was, if I looked through your letterbox of 10 Downing Street at 6 o'clock at night, what could I see? And unfortunately, she never answered the question properly because she said we don't have a letterbox. But I thought, what a fantastic question from the kids. That was really lovely. Um, okay. Uh, Harley wants to know if you like the cheeky <laughs> if you like the cheeky girls, and can you sing one of their songs? 
they haven't had that many bloody songs out, have they? Uh, we are the cheeky girls, the cheeky girls. That's about it, really. They were fun, weren't they? They were a bit of a laugh. <clears throat> uh, hang on, just heard my thing beeping away. Uh, Paul Jones, <clears throat> whose Twitter handle is oh, uh, Jonah underscore Jones eighty one. Uh, is asking me, uh, when was your last time? When was the last time you were back in your hometown or your old town of Bootle? <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I come from Liverpool. Yeah, great part of the world. Love the Liverpool folk. Um, there's a lot of great towns up and down the country, aren't there? there really are. Uh, Liverpool uh, is a favourite. Last time I was in Bootle was when I knocked on a door and gave away some cash. And uh, but my family <clears throat> lived in Bootle for a while, then moved out uh, to the sort of St. Helens area. And my dad still lives up there. Uh, and I was up there about sort of four weeks ago. So, yeah, not too long ago, really. My dad came to see me in Panto, doing Beauty and the Beast. Never done Beauty and the Beast. It was an Easter Panto, really odd thing to do. And they phoned me up and they said, we're doing an Easter Panto. Do you want to do it? And I thought, that's not going to work. Bloody hell, did it. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get tickets for it, and people were complaining. Uh, but one lady complained that it wasn't Beauty and the Beast, that she came to see Beauty and the Beast and the Walt Disney show, and she couldn't work out why she was covered in banana and custard. <laughs> Very funny people, aren't they? Uh, love Panto. Uh, can't wait. I'm in Bolt this year. You want to come along and see us at the Macron Stadium? Uh, big place. I think it's an uh, 1,800-seater. Uh, and the tickets are going well, so get in early if you can. Um, I'm doing uh, Dick Rissington, another show. No sign of Dick. Uh, another show that I've never done before. Uh, so I'm quite looking forward to the challenge there. Um, some more questions. Uh, would you rather go forwards or backwards in time? Uh, oh, God. Forwards or... Oh, forwards. I'd love to go forwards. I just love technology. I'm a real, real fan of technology. And I think it's such a shame in this new era of um, uh, technical achievements, the television is so backward. I think television is embarrassing. You know, when you're watching it, they go, oh, uh, right, hang on, we've got a, a way to do this now. Press the green button for yes and the red for no. <laughs> We're ahead of them, aren't we, technically? Uh, we do far more things on our mobile phone and on the web than they do on TV. It's such a shame, really, that they don't get to grips with it and move on. Um, yeah, it's quite embarrassing, really. It's like uh, Sky TV. I don't want to knock Sky. I don't want to knock anybody in telly. Um, but whose idea was it at Sky that you could wind through the adverts? They must be losing the fortune. <laughs> you know, advertisers must be like, hang on. They wind through adverts. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's put it on the net. Oh, I don't know, you know. And the iPlayer's fantastic, but they should have charged a little fee for it, and then that would have paid for drama for the next 30 years. They wouldn't have to put the licence fee, which they might do. Who knows? Oh, anyway, um, going a bit there. Uh, I wish papers on our can say cheeky girls. What's the naughtiest joke you can tell us? Oh, God. No, I can't tell that one. Oh. oh, I've got loads of naughty jokes I tell, but I can't do it on the web, can I? Um, I always think the song Love Hurts would be a great song for a Vaseline advert, don't you? <laughs> that, that's just probably as naughty as I can get on the web, really, isn't it? Um, oh, God. Call SeaWorld? Said my call was being recorded for training purposes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't tell naughty jokes. There's loads in my head. Um, I could do one about Heather Mills, couldn't I? I don't know. There's no one here. I'm talking to myself. What about <laughs> Look at someone for an opinion. My wife's like Heather Mills. She only wears half the shoes she buys. I suppose that's quite naughty, really, isn't it? Um, two men have been arguing about who sits next to my wife uh, to get the best view of her legs. She had to keep them apart all morning. Um, 
Oh God, I don't know. I think I've got a stalker. Everyone else who's ten paces ahead of me. Innuendo, a great name for a Spanish suppository. <laughs> These are all old jokes that I've heard or have been told. Um, got on. Oh, no. um, oh, come on. Caught a plumber shagging me dog. It's okay because his corgi registered. Hey! <laughs> right, there you go. <coughs> Can't tell really. I, I do know a few, like we all do, really, but uh, not on the web. Uh, Catherine wants to know if you'll be her friend to cheer up. <laughs> She's been miserable. <laughs> is that miserable, miserable Catherine, is it? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be my friend, Catherine. Yeah, I I just like the sound of you. It sounds good. Uh, uh, Catherine, uh, 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 right? Who would you play? In ch <laughs> <laughs> who Who would you play in Check as the Musical? Oh God, wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Oh, that is so funny. Who would you play? I'd play Cheggers Pop. Cheggers plays Pop. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Cheggers would play Pop in um, <laughs> Cheggers the Musical. Can you imagine that? Oh, my God, what criticism I'm going to get even for thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> James says it's an 18-plus audience, so I can tell dirty jokes. That's basically what you're saying, isn't it, really? Um, no. <laughs> No, I can't. Uh, strictly come dancing, not the best mind to get a, a party, is it? But hey, <laughs> that's on the edge. That's not really that naughty, is it? Eh? Uh, that one, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <clears throat> do you think Simon <laughs> should get a third pizza tonight or is two enough? Depends how big he is, really. Is he a big lad? Um, don't know. Sorry, picture on the web. Very good. I think I saw him on Crime Watch as well. <laughs> I'd go for the third pizza. I really would. I don't. Do you know what? It's the one food I don't like. I don't like pizza. It's awful. It's just like cardboard and a bit of veg thrown on top. And really, really, really boring. And everybody I know loves pizza. And at the end of Panto, I said to everybody, I said, look, take you all out for a meal. Let's all go for a nice, you know, Italian or anything, anything you like. They want to, want to be taken to Pizza Hut. So I did. Yeah. It's just like 30 pizzas for 30 people. It's really boring. Oh, God. Oh, now that is really tough. If I was stranded on a desert island, what three things would I take? Oh, gosh, what three things would I take? Oh, my God. Four. Well, I'd like to take my phone, but it don't work there, do it? Um, I'd take my phone so I can play M Fortune Bingo. That's one. Um, I take, do you know what? I, oh no, I can't. I'm on my own, aren't I? So I can't take a scrabble board. There's no, no point. <laughs> Bloody hell, what would I take? Um, well, I was asked to go in the jungle. I've been asked every year that uh, our celebrity's been on. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a bit boring in the jungle, isn't it? Three weeks sweating your whatnots off. Uh, so it's never really appealed to me, that show. Um, and money's rubbish, so I wouldn't do it. Uh, well, it's not that good, what they've offered me. Uh, so, no. Um, oh, dear me. I would probably take... Um, I don't know whether I can take the entire works of Shakespeare, um, but I do, I love reading. I can't tell you, I really do enjoy reading. Oh, I know what I do. I take all the crime novels from a guy called Yo Nesbo. He's a Norwegian writer, crime writer. Uh, so that would be fantastic. And I could read those um, books over and over again. I think he's written about 10 books and I've read all of them. <laughs> 
in one go because <laughs> I don't sleep much. Uh, but a, a, an author called Yo Nesbo, so I take that. I take the guitar because um, I do like strumming and playing along. Um, do you want to hear me play guitar? The answer is no. So <laughs> I take books, guitar, and a knife. There you go, a knife. Most useful thing in the whole wide world. Shall I get my guitar? Uh, James Swallow wants to know, was it cold in Naked Jungle? Hey, <laughs> It's always the fellas that ask the questions, isn't it? Hey, there you are, 11 o'clock, watching Chaggers. Box of tissues on the side. Come on. Keith Chegrin's coming on the screen in the minute. <laughs> oh, funny. Actually, it was cold. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> oh, hang on. There's a, it's that pair of scissors on the seat. Uh, do you want to play? I haven't played for ages. There you go. I don't know what to play now, I've got it. I'm always the way in it. I don't know what to play to people. Uh, yeah, so I'd take the guitar uh, if I was on a desert island. And um, yeah, those books by Jonas Bo and a knife, because that is so useful, really, isn't it? Uh, how's all your bingo going? Hopefully you're winning. Have you got any names you'd like me to mention of people uh, winning? Give me a shout. Uh, I, do you know what? I haven't looked at my Twitter feed. Uh, oh, gosh, there are a few. Um, Ashley, can you give us a shout out to the Bearded Wanderers? <laughs> who are having a quiz night on Sunday and would love a hello. So there you go. Hello to the bearded wanderers. Hope you're all well. Um, hello to you lot. Um, oh, my God. Robert Sinclair. <clears throat> Hi, Rob. Uh, one of my followers. And his um, name is uh, at 147 Roberts. Thank you. Uh, if you were to star in a sitcom, what would it be about? What would you like to be the star or star or be in a sitcom? Um, do you know what? <clears throat> I did this thing called Life's Too Short um, with Les Dennis, and uh, I can't I can't tell you what a lovely time uh, we had on it with Ricky Gervais, and uh, I think Ricky did have plans. Um, to make a series out of it, but he's such a busy guy, and he writes so many things. I mean, when we did Life's Too Short, he gave us the script seven months before we actually did it. Uh, so that's how far ahead he is. I think he's even further than that, really. Uh, but I suppose, yeah, I'd like to do a bit of Life's Too Short again. That would be fun. <clears throat> um, and uh, <laughs> uh, where are we? Lots of people asking if you shove Nigel Farage out of the way and front the Leave campaign. <laughs> hey, look, what I'm saying is um, I'm not one of those sort of political people, um, but I do think that uh, we could get a better uh, uh, deal uh, with Europe, and I think we are entitled to ask for it. So I think by leaving uh, and then renegotiating, which... I can't imagine it's going to take that long to do, really, and wouldn't cause us that many problems. Uh, leaving for a short period, renegotiating, I don't think it's going to do anyone any harm, really. I mean, I think we've all done it with our careers, haven't we? Even if you're a bus driver or a lorry driver or you, know, you work in a shop, you like to renegotiate your contract or your deal every so often. You want a little bit more pay and maybe a bit more time off or that sort of thing. Um, so I think as far as um, you know, Europe is concerned, I think we could do better. Uh, so I think I'll leave the politicians to do what hopefully they do best, to be honest with you. Uh, they drive me up the bloody wall. I mean, if politicians are so sodding well good and so caring about us, uh, answer me this one question. Why aren't they on the minimum wage? Hey! <laughs> yeah, but we won't give you a straight answer to that one, will they? Uh, <clears throat> 
So yes, I mean, uh, in Europe, but not in Qatar. Leave, get a better deal. Uh, what would your pub, what would your pub quiz team be called? <laughs> That's very good. Uh, oh, I know. If you're in a pub, cheggers can't be boozers. Hey, hey. You know, everyone on Twitter always writes that as a bit of a joke about Keith Chegrin and Cheggers can't be boozers, and they all think they wrote it themselves, but I actually wrote it. Uh, where are we? Oh my gosh, it's going back 25 years ago. I came out with a book, and the title was going to be Cheggers can't be boozers, but the publisher said, no, uh, can't have that on a shelf. Uh, <laughs> uh, top selling book, that. Writing another one at the moment. Um, who would your five dream dinner party guests be, uh, what would you cook for them? Uh, I would cook a roast, because uh, I'm quite good at cooking roasts. Um, yeah, a lamb, oh, God, lamb, it's so expensive, but it's very good. Uh, nice piece of lamb. And my dinner guest would be, um, oh my God, Phil Collins. Everyone knocks Phil Collins. I was, when people are successful, there's a lot of people who can't wait to bring them down, you know. Uh, but Phil Collins, absolutely, Lovely bloke. Tell you a nice story. Um, I took my daughter to school on a Monday. And she was only sort of five at the time, five or six. And then uh, everyone was happy in the car park, parents chatting and all that sort of thing. And uh, following day, took her to school. Oh, no one wanted to talk to me. And I couldn't work out why I was going, hello, whoa, pass me. Oh, whoa, pass me. Anyway, it, it wasn't until the end of the week um, that I found out what was going on because I did comic relief and Phil Collins and I uh, played a part in the television show, spoof television show, Casualty. Now Phil Collins and I were dressed up as nurses, right? Now I didn't realise but my daughter had gone to school on the Monday and told all the teachers and everyone at the school I was with my daddy this weekend and he was dressed up as a nurse. But she didn't actually tell her why. <laughs> and when Comic Relief went out, uh, the following Monday I went in, all the parents were fantastic. They were all laughing, saying, oh, God, how funny. Um, but yes, she went to school, told everyone her daddy was dressed up as a nurse with another man. <laughs> Very funny. <clears throat> um, I've forgotten what the blooming question was. Oh, I've done that one. Uh, oh, five people at a dinner party. Uh, it, it would be uh, Phil Collins. Um, who else? I don't know why I choose this guy, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, I just think he's a bit of a laugh. Uh, and he'd be great company, wouldn't he? So I quite, quite enjoy that. Um, Ricky Gervais would have to be there because of his animal laugh. Uh, just set, would set any party alight. He's just a, 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 such a giggler. Uh, so that's three, isn't it? Uh, who else? Oh. God, oh, if I could have had him, Prince, uh, it's such a, sh a great loss, really, isn't it, uh, to the music industry and, and uh, you know, all his bands, uh, but Prince would have been the ideal dinner party guest, uh, and also I'd probably be taller than him, <laughs> but uh, how fantastic, and Freddie Mercury, oh my God, I'd love to have met Mercury, and that's all the, uh, the other team from Queen, Brian May, uh, Kenny Jones, the, uh, that wasn't Kenny Jones, yeah, uh, oh, anyway. um, and lovely people, and uh, he'd have made the icing on the cake. So there you go, I think that's five. Um, Snoop Frog wants to know if you have a didgeridoo. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit worried about you, Snoop Dogg, really am. Uh, Check us for Prime Minister. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yes, I go down to Checkers each weekend. Checkers? Yeah, right. Hey, this is a true story, that's right. I was, um, I did a program called Checkers Plays Pop, and it was a pop music program and indoor game. So it's like indoor, it's an arcade combined with top pops. And uh, we used to record the show on a Sunday night, and then believe it or not, I'd get the two tapes after editing, stick them in the back of my car, take them down to London. I'd arrive in London around about, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning, and then the technicians at the BBC downstairs at White City uh, would say, I'll just leave them over there, Keith. And they had numbers on. They didn't have names, just numbers. Uh, so <laughs> now, the interesting thing is, my brother-in-law at the time 
was director of BBC News. He sat in the gallery directing things, right? And um, by coincidence, the Prime Minister had gone to Chequers that weekend, right? So the opening titles of the news was the Prime Minister at Chequers, right? So the director, just before the news started, said, have we got the clip of the Prime Minister at Chequers? And the technician said, yes, we have. And it was only by fluke that my brother-in-law at the time turned around and said, can I just see the first 30 seconds of it? And they played it. But it's actually the only title of Checkers Plays Pop. He went, Jing, Checkers Plays Pop. He went, no, that's, <laughs> that's not it. So another story. I'm full of anecdotes. It's awful, isn't it, really? Um, so uh, Checkers for a Pirate. Are we going to see more Checkers in politics? Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I think I'm just the same as everybody else. Really, I've got an opinion. Um, you know, uh, never talk about religion and politics. That's what they always say. Uh, but I think it's quite nice to dip your toe in the water on important occasions. Really, isn't it? Uh, I've never met um, what's the word? Uh, any politician that I'm a fan of. I've always met a politician that's uh, always wants to be liked. You know, and always doing something for themselves. Do you know what, do you see what I mean? You know, I'll give you an example of that. I used to um, tell radio quite a bit, um, opening radio stations and that sort of thing. Um, and there was always a line of politicians who wanted to be non-executive uh, people on the board. And the reason being is because the non-exec would get £6,000 in their pocket each year and they'd only have to turn up for one meeting. So it's always a bit of a worry, isn't it, when you get politicians like that phone you up. I do think a lot of them are in it for what they can get. And there are a lot of honest politicians. I'll have to sort of uh, give them a, a wave to um, But they do worry me. They really do. Um, anyway, um, uh, we could definitely see the Mayor of London. Why, well, hey. <laughs> uh, You've been naked in the jungle. Have you had any uh, wardrobe malfunctions that we don't know about? Um, no. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, and finally, can you play us out with a song? Um, I don't know. Should I do something off here? Um, I'm trying to think, really. Oh, my God. Hang on. What can I do here? Country backing track, you're my favourite. Um, oh my god. Oh, just from me, really. Certainly are. Keep playing, and who knows? Hopefully, you're the champions playing them fortune bingo. And as I always say, always look on the bright side of love. <laughs> That's all from me. Can I say thanks ever so much uh, to the team that have looked after me since I've been here. And uh, to you, wish you lots of luck on M Fortune. Fingers crossed I might be back. <laughs> and who knows, I might be able to take calls. Uh, but until then, look after yourselves. And thanks for being great. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed your hour, because I certainly have. God, it's gone so blooming quick, is it? Um, look after yourselves and take care. Goodbye. Oh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> that's it. I've got to turn myself off now, haven't I? Oh, I'm going absolutely potty. Oh, that's the weakest link. I shouldn't have finished off with that, should I? No. Well, that, really. Thank you. I'm leaving the building. I'm leaving the building. Bye-bye. I've gone. <laughs>